He's a Max is a security researcher at Lookout. He's been doing this for about 10 years. He spent a lot of time in obfuscation, exploit development, security research, previous Black Hat speaker, currently focused on mobile security research and working on his PhD. He'll be telling you about some of the internals of Pegasus malware today. With that, I will turn it over to Max to take it away. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So my, my name is Max Bazelli, and today we'll talk about the Pegasus internals. I'm from Kyiv, Ukraine. Currently work as a security researcher at Lookout, and last few years focused on jailbreak techniques. So that's why I co-founded the Fried Apple team, where we're working on a various iOS jailbreak, including eight and nine. So Pegasus. Pegasus is a high-quality espionage software. Uh, that can be used for completed surveillance of a device. It's just everything from stealing your personal data up to remotely activating a microphone or camera on a device without any indication it's really happening. So in order Pegasus to work, it needs to jailbreak a device first because the IS sandbox prevents application from spying on each other. So that's why Pegasus rely on a Trident exploit chain to completely uh, own a device and install persistence that can be used on each uh, device reboot. Here's a really terrifying list of target apps, including even the known as most secure ones like Telegram, WhatsApp, Viber. And I'm pretty sure you can find your favorite messenger in this list. Before going into a deep technical analysis of the vulnerabilities used, I want to tell a story how we get a Pegasus sample. So please meet uh, Ahmed Mansour, who's uh, mostly known for his job as a human rights defender. He's even a recipient of Martin Enoff's award, sometimes called the Nobel Prize for uh, Human Rights. So on August 10th this year, Ahmed received a message with a text that uh, someone in a state prison got uh, <clears throat> Someone is in prison in a, in a state prison. So, and he received another text with a similar thing the next day. But previously, he was targeted by a hacking team in 2012 and Game of Thrones Fisher in 2011. So now, instead of clicking on a link, he contacted a citizen lab because he was working with those guys before. So he sent the link for a citizen lab to analysis. And we are in, a, as a lookout research team, we get initial sample and a link from a citizen lab. So in this story, I mostly will focus it about technical part of it. So in order to work, Pegasus rely on a Trident exploit chain and it uses three stages. So on the first stage, it uses memory corruption to achieve a remote code execution in the Safari context. After that, it jumps, after it is on a device, it jumps to a second stage and uses two vulnerabilities to exploit a kernel. One is used for bypass the kernel address space layout randomization, and another to achieve kernel, remote, uh, kernel code execution, kernel level code execution. And finally, on the third stage, it installs uh, HPNR software and uh, uses a special trick to achieve on device persistence. So I will focus on each stage more detailed. Uh, the first stage, as I say, is a single use per fish URL that will be invalidated after a first click. It contains obfuscated JavaScript that the first thing it's doing is checking for a, a device type. Is it iPhone? Is it iPad? Is it 32 or 64 bit? And based it on information about a device processor type, the different versions of shell code will be downloaded, which is in a stage two. And finally, it exploits remote code execution vulnerability in a WebKit to execute the shell code. So what vulnerability would use it? CVE 4657, uh, remote code execution in a WebKit. Uh, basically, the vulnerability is user to free that achieve it by using two bugs. And in a sample that we got, it's not stable because it relies on a WebKit garbage collect. The problem itself lives in a market argument buffer that can be exploited by usage of the defined properties. So defined properties is a method that defines new or modified properties uh, directly on object. It takes a few arguments, uh, the object itself and the properties objects, which can 
have a descriptors uh, that constitute uh, the properties to be defined or modified. It has a pretty simple algorithm contain few loops. On the very first iteration, each, each property descriptor checking for uh, formatting, and after that, get appended to a descriptor's vector. And to make sure that the reference to property descriptors not become stale, they need to be protected from being garbage collected. For this uh, purpose, market argument buffer is used. We see at the very, very end, mark buffer append. So market argument buffer prevents object from being delicate. And after each property get uh, has been validated, uh, and it's OK, the define of property associate each of the user supplied property with a target object. And here is a problem here, because it's possible when the defined property will be called, it's possible to call any user defined JavaScript method. If in these JavaScript methods, um, garbage collection can be triggered, it will delegate any um, unmarked heap bucket object. I will go a little bit deeply in, uh, in the details. First of all, a few words about market argument buffer and JavaScript garbage collector. So gar JavaScript garbage collector is responsible for delegating an object from a memory. When they are no longer referenced, it, it runs at the random intervals and based it on a current memory pressure, on current device types, and so on. And uh, when garbage collector checking if object should be delegated, it walks through the stack and check for reference to an object. Uh, a reference to an object also may exist on application heap, but in this case, alternate mechanism is used called the slow append. So market argument buffer has initial inline stack contains the uh, eight values. That means when the ninth value will be added to market argument buffer, uh, the capacity will be expanded. It will be moved from a stack memory to a heap memory. This is what the slow append is doing. Slow pens move stack from a move buffer from a stack to a heap, and now um, object not automatically protected from a garbage collection. And to make sure they will not delegate it, they need to be added to heap's mark list set. This is what we see here. So slow pens trying to acquire heap context, and it can be acquired adding an object like marking an object by adding to a mark list set. Here is a problem, because uh, when the heap context can be acquired, it can be acquired for a complex object, only for a complex object. So this means for primitive types like integer, booleans, and so on, they are not heap bucket object, and they will be not marked as a markless set. And there is a bug in the slow append, which we will call it just once. So this means when the buffer will be moved from a stack memory to a heap memory, and one of the properties will, will be a simple type, like an integer. It will be not automatically protected by garbage collection, and all the next corresponding values will be not protected as well, because the bug to a slow append. Here we see a picture that illustrating it, and in reality, the reference to JavaScript objects still exists, but if uh, in a in a call to define all property method, any of the user supplied methods will be called. They can remove this reference, and object will be delegated. So to summarize all the information, here is how it can be exploited. So we specify a props object, which contain 12 descriptors. And first, nine of them values are simple types, like zeros, eights. Which means when the p8, which is the ninth value, will be added to uh, Markle said it will trigger the slow append and uh, buffer will be moved from a stack to a heap. And the next corresponding values, which is like length and uh, which not number and array, will be not marked by Markle set and not automatically protected by garbage collection. What happened next? When defined properties will be called on a length property, it will try to convert not number to a number which force that users define it to string method will be called. The string method remove last two reference for an array and force the garbage collection cycle by allocating large amount of memory, which leads that object will be deallocated by garbage collector. The very next thing it is doing is reallocate the new object over a stale one. So this is how specially crafted user-free 
was used in Safari to achieve remote code execution and to execute a shellcode. The shellcode exists in a second stage, which is a payload, uh, which contains the shellcode, compressed data. The most interesting for us is the shellcode, because it's used for a kernel exploitation in Safari context. And the compressed data basically is a um, loader that downloads and decrypts the next stage. One of the vulnerabilities used is uh, CV4655, which is an info leak that's used to uh, bypass a kernel address layout randomization. It exploits the information that constructor and IO centralized binary method, they miss bound checking. So that means that attacker can create OS number object with really high number of bits and call it within the application sandbox where IO register enter good property bytes. Here is how it looks like. So IO centralized binary is a method to handle binary serialized data in a kernel. It converts a binary format to a basic kernel data object. It supports different container types, sets, dictionaries, array, object types, strings, numbers, and the point of interest is OS number. So as we see here, it passed two arguments, value and length, and there is no real check that, uh, for, for length, for the length property. So this means we can control uh, the length that is passed to an object. And why it is a problem? Uh, because here is a constructor for OS number in it, and as we see, the length property passes here its new number of bits, and it overrides the size variable. And the problem is that size is used in other methods, in a case that OS number, number of bytes, which leads that return value of number of bytes is now fully controlled by attacker, which is real bad, because it's used next in IO register entry get property bytes, uh, which handle OS numbers, and it's used number of bytes to calculate the object length, so OS number length. But unfortunately, it used stack-based buffer to parse and save OS number value. And what happened next, it's, it is copying memory from a kernel stack to a heap using the attacker control at length, which means we can specify how many bytes will be copied from a kernel stack and return to user land. This is what happens. The first thing we're doing, we create a properties array that uh, have a dictionary, which have a OS number with a high length, in our case is 256. Next, we need to spawn a user client, I call it IO service open extended, which will uh, deserialize OS number object and create this object in a, in a kernel. And now we need to read it by call it IO register enter get property, which leads it, uh, we copy the 256 bytes of the kernel stack memory, and the kernel stack memory will contain uh, kernel pointers, and from a kernel pointer we can determine the kernel base. So now we get a kernel base, and we can jump to the next vulnerability, which is CV4656. It's use of the free to achieve a kernel level code execution. It exploits information because the seated index macro does not really retain an object, and we can trigger it within the application sandbox from IOS unserialized binary. Again, IOS unserialized binary, uh, it's a like, function that parse and deserialize uh, object in a kernel. It supports different data types, different container types, and the interesting thing, it supports KIOS serialized object. It means that we can uh, create a reference to another object. It will be really useful in the future because in a way of deserializing and parsing objects, uh, OS centralized binary saved object pointer to a special objects array and using set at index for it. And as we see, set at index just save object pointer to array with some index, not retaining it. That's bad. Because the next code, which casting OS string to OS symbol, it is releasing the object pointer. What does it mean? We still have an array that holds all the object pointers, which is objects array, and we just release one of the objects, but still hold the pointer. If we can create a reference to an object, we can exploit user to free. This is what happens, because KIO serialized object allows us to create a reference, and we will just call retain on already deserialized, already delegated object. This is how exploit look like. 
So first of all, we create OS dictionary. Uh, that will contain a string that due to bug will be delegated. So now we need to reallocate it with our control it object to fit in the same uh, memory spot. As OS string in, in our case will OS string uh, class in a memory will be 32 bytes, we need to allocate the same size. For this purpose, OS data is a perfect candidate because we can uh, control OS data buffer, buffer size and buffer content. So what we can do, we can create a fake OS string with a fake V table, and this fake V table will point to some gadgets in the kernel. The very last thing we need to do is trigger user to free by adding KIO serialized object. So once again, OS string got uh, the serialized, the allocated, we allocate new object, which is OS data buffer, which will point to the same memory spot. We got a user to free. So after getting user to free, Pegasus use uh, some kernel patches to disable uh, security checks, like patch set UID to easily escalate the privileges, uh, bypass MFI checks by patching out MFI get out of my way, disable code assignment enforcement by patching CS enforcement disable variable, and finally remount system partition to be readable writable so it can execute uh, a loader for the next stage. They will download and decrypt the next stage. The next stage contains the real SPNS software that will be used to sniff all the like SMS, all the calls, all the like personal data. It have uh, three uh, groups. One is the process group, which have a main um, process uh, sniffing services, the model that use a C protocol to communicate with command control, uh, like a process manager, and so on. The next interesting thing is a group of the dialects, because Pegasus rely on side substrate, the jailbreak framework, called, rename it as libdata, and use a side substrate to inject dynamic libraries into application process. So in our case, we have a dynamic libraries for Viber, for WhatsApp, Imaim, it will be injected to application space and install application hooks. And the last thing is com apple iTunes store D file, which is a JavaScript that contains uh, code and a shell code that will uh, execute, that can execute unsigned code. I will focus on it next. So the bug exists in a JSC binary. JSC binary is like a helper for JavaScript core, uh, JavaScript engine in Apple. And it can lead to unsigned code execution. In uh, combination with RT body G trick, it can be used to completely gain a persistent on the device. It exploits that it is a bad cast in set early value method. And uh, fortunately, it can be triggered only from GST application context. So what is the problem? It's exploit a problem in JavaScript uh, binding set impure getter delegate, which have a in C++ words, function set impure getter delegate. This function takes a few arguments. One is a impure, uh, impure getter, and the second one is a generic JS object that will be set as this impure getter delegate. The problem will be next slide. So we just parse uh, two arguments and call a set delegate. The set delegate called set, which finally call set early value. Here is a problem because. There is no real check that the object type passed to uh, set impure getter delegate is really uh, impure getter. So this means that if any other object type will be passed, it will be improperly downcasted as impure getter pointer. That's what happened here. So it's, it's a bad cast that have no real check for an object type, and which lead uh, that we can override one of the object fields. Here is the same function, but now decompile it in either probe. So in our case, impure getter is a base variable here, and the delegate is this generic uh, JS object. We see that a pointer, which is base plus 16, can be overwritten with a pointer to a delegate, which lead, if we see on the right, JS array buffer view class. If we pass JS array buffer view class as a first argument, the M vector field will be overwritten with a pointer to a delegate which is really bad because it can leak, lead to readable, writable primitives. 
To explain that, Pegasus uses two data views. I will call them data view one and data view two. And uh, call a set impure, impure getter delegates on, on both, that, which leads that M vector field in the first data view will be overwritten with the pointer to the second data view. And now, by setting and reading values on the first data view, we can overwrite object fields in a second. Why we need it? We can map the second data view as entire process memory. By uh, overwriting second data view array buffer of set to be zero, by overwriting second data view length to be four gigabytes in a case of 32-bit process and set uh, type as fast array type. So basically, second data view, now it's mapped into entire process space and we can get int, set int to get arbitrary read and write anywhere in a process memory. The same thing can be used even to get execution primitive. But in this case, we can call set impure getter delegate twice. And instead of exposing the entire process memory, we can leak just an object address. If we can leak an object address, we can create JS function that have like hundreds of try, empty try catch uh, constructions and uh, force G to compile it. And in, a, in this process, a special readable, writable, executable memory segment will be allocated. We can leak address of this uh, JIT segment, overwrite it with a shell code, and execute. So this is how the bad cast can be used to like, re-exploit even a kernel on, on each boot. It's used with a persistent mechanism, which is RT by DD. So the problem is that system uh, spawning RT by DD uh, service with a special early boot argument. This means if we take any other binary signed by Apple and name it as RT by DD, it will be spawned on a boot. That's what Pegasus is doing. So they take JC binary, which is signed by Apple, name it as RT by DD, then take a JavaScript that contains exploit, make it as a symlink, call it early boot which leads when the RTBDD will be spawned with early boot, it will call JSC with JS exploit instead. So with this trick and the bad cast, it re-exploit kernel on each device boot. There are some tricks that Pegasus use to make it harder to reverse engineer, like use one-time links, so after you click on any of the links, they will be invalidated and now redirect to Google or other sites. It re encrypts all the payloads each time they are downloaded just on the fly. And of course, it's trying to hide itself to make it look like a system component. Um, of course, it blocks IO system updates to make sure you, can, you cannot patch your device just on the fly. Uh, to clear all the evidence, cl clear Safari history and caches. And we even found the self destruct mechanism that can be triggered remotely. Uh, or on a timeout. So in addition to this refined list of supported applications, it records any microphone usage, any camera usage, GPS location, keychain passwords, even including Wi-Fi and the router one. Why they need router? I don't know. Application hooking. So how, how it operates, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's use side substrate. Uh, and with, with the help of site substrate, it preloads dynamic libraries into application process and uh, intercepts some critical functions. It uses signject to run into already, into already running processes. So this is like a high-level picture how it looks like. So all the application level uh, critical functions and the framework level critical functions are intercepted by Pegasus. So now Pegasus can control them, can collect them, can pack them, can send to a command control, and so on. To summarize, Pegasus is a remote jailbreak spotted in the wild. It's pretty scary because it doesn't require any user interaction. And the last similar thing was like five years ago when the comics released his jailbreak mystery. This year, look at Tedesca used one of the tri trident vulnerabilities for his jailbreak. I want to say special thanks to Citizen Lab for helping us with uh, achieving a Pegasus sample, all the Lookout research and response team, the Divergent security guys, and all the individual researchers who was involved in the research. 
There's a list of some useful links which contain a 44-page PDF report with a really, really deep details on uh, vulnerabilities. Just use it even with a difference between 32 and 64-bit ones. So if you're interested, please take a look. I think this is it. Do you guys have any questions? Say it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, please keep it brief. We only have some minutes left for the questions, and uh, if there are any questions, please go to the microphones in the hall. And we start with the signal angel from the internet. Thank you. Is there any way to build your app protected from this exploit? Um, yes, it is because the Pegasus use some of the um, known jailbreak techniques. It is possible to detect, for example, uh, that system partition is remounted as readable, writable. It could be one of the indicators that some generic jailbreak is uh, running on a device. Or like check for especially files that Pegasus use, but like better check it in general for uh, jailbreak patches, the kernel patches. Please try to stay a bit quiet. We are still in the middle of the Q&A. If you don't have to leave now, please stay seated until afterwards. And if you have to leave now, please do not talk. Microphone three, please. Hey, what's the user experience during this? User experience, I mean, you mean when, when you get a device uh, infected by, by Pegasus? Well, there is the scary thing, there is no real uh, indicators on a device that you get something. Uh, you, you click on a link, the, your mobile web browser opens and just closes and crashes. This, this is it. There is no new applications uh, spotted on your um, only visible applications and so on. But in a real, it's running like three new system services, but then they're not visible to a user. Thank you, and please another question from the internet. Thank you. Have you any idea how active this exploit is in the wild? Uh, say it again, please. Have you any idea how active this exploit is in the wild? Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was a very targeted attack, because uh, these exploits are pretty expensive. For example, uh, the radio now pays one and a half million for remote jailbreaks like this. So I don't think the authors of this uh, like spyware want to like want to deal malware accessible for everyone. So I think it's very very targeted attacks. Uh, it's it's hard to predict how many devices was infected by Pegasus. Uh, now we know about uh, the Mansur one. So again, I think it's a very, very dangerous thing because it's very expensive. Thank you for this answer. Um, microphone number five, please. Hi. Do you have any more information on the NSO or the group that's behind it? Um, are they using any other software? And how spread is this in the wild again? Yeah. So in, in this case, we focus it mostly on uh, technical details of the Pegasus itself. But um, Citizen Lab made their investigation on uh, NSO, and like, that NSO is like cyber arms dealer. So please take a look about in a um, citizen lab report on that. So they have much more information. Do we have a question from the internet? Am I overlooking anyone? No, then this is it. Thank you for your talk.